I'd like to thank you on the behalf of the family for showing your love, your attendance and presence. And uh, <clears throat> I'm just uh, want to say thank you for being here and showing the love for the life and the celebration that we can have today for J.W. Cowick. <clears throat> As J.W. Was, has been going through times of, of maybe not the best health, maybe rougher in his life at, towards the end, but the truth is that here on earth, the suffering is no longer taking place. And so we can, we can rejoice in the fact that he's no longer going through that pain here. And so today, <clears throat> as we come together, <clears throat> let this be a celebration. What can we learn? What can we see in the life of J.W. that is inspiring us? What did God do through him that we can learn to apply to our lives? What can we have today? <clears throat> what can we, how can we rejoice in the life of J.W.? Before we start today, I would like to open us up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today. We thank you for the life and the testimony of J.W. Cowick. Lord, I, I thank you for everything that you've done through him and everything that you've done in this family. Lord, family is so precious. It is so important. It is one of the greatest gifts that we ever have, Lord. And we thank you that you have done it all, that you have given us the gifts, that you have given us so many things to be thankful for, for the life of of JW. <clears throat> As we, some of us, we, we may have our own stories, some of us have our own reflections, some of us have our own opinions about the life of JW, but today is a time where we remember all of those things with a joyful heart, with a humble spirit. Lord, lead us and guide us this service as we can hear your word, but also the life, and, and hear the testimony that J.W. left on so many people here today as, as being here is a reflection of the love that Mr. Cowick had. <clears throat> Lord, you are good and your mercies are everlasting and your truth endures to all generations. As there's different people here today with different backgrounds, different stories, different circumstances, but today we have all had our paths intersect. And I pray, Lord, that it can be done for your glory and your honor. Lord, we love you and we thank you, and it's in your name. Amen. At this time, um, I, I would like just to open up for a few moments. Um, if there's any uh, special memory, just a, a favorite memory that maybe you had with JW, if uh, now would be a, a good time for us to share it. So uh, you just have to think, you know, maybe just a favorite memory. If anyone would like to share that at this moment, um, you're more than welcome to. You can, you can stand in your pew or you can come up here uh, and share something if you'd like to say, uh, to share something with the group. Well, let us take a moment all to reflect on the life of JW in our own in our own time. Let's just let's just take a few moments. We close our eyes and we can reflect on the moments with JW.
Amen. <clears throat> At this time, I'd like to um, open up for uh, Mr. Russell Haston. Uh, we're going to be doing our uh, doing a song, and uh, we'll be doing one day at a time, uh, as requested by the family. And uh, I hope that uh, that it can be a blessing to you. I'm only human I'm just a man Help me believe In what I can be And all that I am Show me the stairway Our scripture reading today is going to come from Isaiah 59, verse 21. It says, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you will not depart from you, and my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips, and the lips of your children, and the lips of their descendants from this time on. And forever, says the Lord. You know, the goodness of God 
will not depart from you as it says in this scripture. The, the Spirit of God, the things that the Spirit of God has given you through the life of J.W. Cowick. God's gifts to you from the life that he lived. And these are not just gifts for us to remember, but they're gifts for us to joyously rejoice in. These are gifts to learn from. These are lifestyles to, to see how we can mold into these good gifts that God has given us. Maybe some, some things like being more giving, like J.W. was so giving, how, how you would walk in and you would not leave empty-handed. To make you laugh. Make you laugh to the point where your side hurt. Be able to, to really give you the joy, to make you really enjoy, or maybe to pick on someone. You know, he didn't hesitate to pick on people, but he also would, could be picked on. Not always, but most of the time could be picked on pretty well. Connection with creation is another thing that he did. He enjoyed hunting. He enjoyed being outdoors. He was, he was into riding horses. He, he did all these things, and they're so much special. And even being connected with creation is as other humans as, as are to each other, never truly meeting a stranger. Most of all, to have a family. What I'm seeing right here in front of me, that's a testimony in itself. You can tell he loved his family because the love of the family has for each other. And, and who was here today, you can tell there is a testimony there. J.W., he was not only a grandfather, he was a great-grandfather. He was a father. He was a husband. And I think this room is full of crickets. And that's not me saying I need an amen. That's actually me saying that this room is full of people J.W. cared about deeply. And it must have made him happy to see his grandchildren. You know, think about his, I see, I've met these grandchildren. And to see these grandchildren grow into the men and women that they are today. And he, loved to see, he had to have loved to see those great grandkids running around. Had to love to see them. And I can almost guarantee the great grandkids would agree. And then we have Tammy and Lisa and David and Trina. You know, you're the ones who carry on so much of your father. Even though he might have been the admiral growing up, maybe come home from long day, you know, in the truck. But, and he may have been uh, the colonel at home. But he was your father. And based from who I'm looking at, he blessed us all. He blessed us with the gifts that he gave you. And surely, we all need to pray for you. We do. And we will be with you. But thank you for all that you did for him. You know, you told me he never wanted to be alone. And you made sure that was a reality. You made sure he was never alone. 22 years is a testimony, Shirley. And everyone here, we need to keep this family in our prayers. There's many gifts that J.W. left behind that are sitting right here, that are sitting among, among you. There are so many gifts that J.W. left. But I believe the greatest gift that J.W. could give any of us right now in this moment if he was standing here before you today i believe that he would have an urgency about him to say that we need to get our hearts right with jesus christ today the truth is that jw is no longer with us here on earth he is no longer his body is no longer here but the truth of the matter is we all will live forever the question is where? The question is where are we going to have our eternal destiny? Where are we going to put our trust, our faith into? So today I'm going to tell you, I believe the greatest gift anyone could ever give. And that is the gift of Jesus Christ. God created us all. He created every single one of us. He created the human race by words. 
By speaking it into existence, God says, not only did he speak us into existence, but he said that it was very good. He says that you and me are fearfully and wonderfully made, is what the scripture says. And not only are we told that we are made in the image of God, we are also told that God wants a relationship with us. That means that of all the mass, the, the, the creation that he has, the stars and, and, and the wonders of all the world, there is nothing more precious than the life of you and me. John 14, 2, he says that my father's house has many rooms, and if that were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? He is saying that he loves us so much, he has prepared a place for us if we trust in him. God loves you. If there is one thing I want you to know today is that God loves you. He has always been good to you. He has always been gracious. And some will say, what about the problems in the world? Well, what about the issues that are going on in my home? What, are, what about the problems in my life? What about the depression? What about this, the, the terrible moment? And that is because when God created man, he gave us something much, much more interesting. See, he could have fixed all the problems in the world. He could have, he could have just made sure that everything was according to his own design and his own plan. He could have made sure that every single thing was made without any blemish, without any error. But he did something even more powerful than that. He gave us the power of choice. A choice to follow God or a choice to follow ourselves. We all have chosen to follow ourselves in our lives. We all have gone astray we all have turned our backs on God. There have been paths that God has wanted us to go down, and we have turned our backs on Him. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And here's the thing about this perfect God, this loving God. He's also a just God. True love has justice as well. He's a just God, and He, he, does, he must judge in perfection. He must judge for what we deserve. It says in the Bible, it says the wages of sin is death. We don't deserve to be here. We truly have all made mistakes in our life. Some of us, some of us might say, well, I haven't made as big of mistakes as that person or that person. But the truth is that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. And we don't deserve to be here. We don't deserve the oxygen that we breathe. God gives us so much mercy every single day. But God loves you. Like I'm saying, God loves us. There is more to the story. There has to be more than just our brokenness and our weakness. And just like J.W. loved going to those flea markets, loved going and loved buying and selling and trading, God did the same thing with our eternal life. He bought us at a price. God bought all of our brokenness back, all the stuff that we don't, that we don't deserve. He bought all of it back through Jesus Christ. Making all of our wrongs, making all the things that we've gotten wrong right by sending His Son, Jesus Christ. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved you, He paid a price for you and me. He paid a price for all of us to have eternal life through Jesus Christ. The truth is, is that he is the way. John 14, 6, it says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. We all deserve death. We all deserve a place called hell. But God allowed us. God allowed us. Through the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, God allowed us to have a heavenly place with Him. God allowed us to have a, a future. God allowed us to have eternal life, not in misery, but have eternal life in paradise. Have eternal life through the joy of having a heavenly, the joy of God who created us from the very beginning. Before we, we even formed in our womb, He knew who we are. He knew everything. about. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows the very nature of your being. He knows where your weaknesses are. He knows where your strengths are. But He loves you. Even though we deserve something so much darker, something so much worse, He still makes a way for us 
to accept his son Christ. And that's the greatest gift that anyone can ever have is eternal life. That you can be able to walk out of these doors and know that there is no death that's going to happen for you. There may be a separation. There may be an end to this life. But there is an eternal life waiting for you that is so much greater, so much more immense than what we have here on earth. You can live in heaven when you die, but you can also have a relationship with God right here and right now. We don't need to wait we don't need to wait until we get to the end of our life. We don't need to wait, but we can have a relationship with God. And yes, we won't have the streets of gold today, but you can have a relationship with God today. Not only is he going to give you a relationship, but some of you are over here thinking, how in the world am I going to be useful to, to the world? How can I have purpose? How can I have a calling? Is what I'm doing worth it? The truth of the gospel is not that you aren't and you can't. The truth of the gospel is that you are and you can by the grace of God. Not only will he, a relationship with God give you eternal life, he will give you a relationship and he will give you purpose. He will give you calling. He will give you meaning. And God is calling every single one of us. Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking at the door of your heart. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. He says, he says if, you are, are you, if you are contemplating, if you are thinking, yes, I want to do a life with God. I want to follow his salvation. I want to follow who he is. He says, I'm knocking on the door. I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you if you open the door for me. And I will be with you. I will comfort you in the times of struggle. I will be with you in the hills. And I will be with you through the valleys. I will be through the trenches. I will crawl every single step of the way with you i will lift the weight off of your shoulders because jesus does that for people he is not done he is not done saving people he is not done saving the lives of people he is here and his spirit is still moving god gives us his covenant going back to what we started with whenever we have this relationship with god he he gives us this covenant. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. He says, my spirit who is on you will not depart from you. And my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips. So he says that whenever you have this, when you have the gift that God gave you, when you have salvation, whenever you trust in Jesus, whenever you have this, he says, it's not going to depart from you. It is not going to go away. And here's the thing. It goes further on. It says, it's not just going to be on your lips. It's going to be the lips of your children and then the lips of their descendants from this time and forever. J.W.'s life, the good things that God gave him here on earth, the good things that we can learn from him, we can carry on, not just to today, but we can carry on outside these walls. We can have our faith in God. We can have our faith in Christ. And he can lead us to have a purpose, to have a calling, to have something real and genuine in our lives, just as so many of us can remember the good things about J.W. Cowick. And it's not going to be just done it's not done with him it's not just done with the children it's not just done with the grandchildren it's for all of us it's for every single one of us and whenever we do not depart from the word of god when we do not depart from our salvation in christ we can have it not just for ourselves but for our children and our children's children and our children's children into all generations when we cling to god to being our heavenly father J.W. had so many gifts. He had so many gifts that he had to offer to the world. He lived a life. I mean, he was he was someone who, you know, there was a funny there's funny stories. He picked on people. He had a good time. I know when, I know I heard from his early years. Whenever he was at, when he was at Prospect, whenever they were giving shots out some vaccines or something, he jumped right out the window. He was trying to get away. You know, there's some really funny things and and he and he he was he never met a stranger and he always would you know he, he just people just knew him and that's an amazing testimony to have so many things that we can learn but the greatest gift that any of us can have from the life of jw 
is salvation through Jesus Christ. We have these memories. These are amazing. But these memories of all the good things that we remember, all the blessings that we have, they don't just come, you know, in a memory. There's stuff that's embodied in us today. There's stuff, the memories, these are not just memories, but these are traits that we have today that we can give to God, that God can use, that God can advance his kingdom. The greatest gift that any of us can ever have is salvation through Christ. And that is something that J.W. today, I believe if he was here, he would say that is the most important thing for us to get our hearts right with Christ. And I believe of all the ones who have lost someone today, all the ones who have lost someone in the last few years, someone that is still so heavy on your heart, I believe they would all say that we need to examine our hearts with Jesus. We need to examine our hearts with God. Are we right with God? There's nothing that you can do to be right with God except for trust in Jesus. Because we're never going to get it all right. But God already made a way to make it all right. We just have to trust in what he did. We have to believe in what he did. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you today for your message. I thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that we can cling to that amazing grace that you gave us that we can make it real, that we, it can flesh out in our lives, that we can carry on the legacy of JW, that we can carry on the good things that we knew from him. Lord, I thank you for, what he, for, for the life that you gave him. I thank you for the testimony. I thank you for the things that we can learn from him. Lord, you have blessed us so much. Lord, you have blessed me so much as I've gotten to know the family, as I've, as I've, as I've talked with them. You've blessed me so much as I've met some of the folks out here that it showed today. Lord, I thank you for the love that they are going to show this family. Lord, I thank you for your salvation through Jesus Christ most of all. I pray that we can hold on to that good, good gift. I pray that if there's anyone here today that has not taken it up with you in their hearts, Lord, I pray they do this at this time. Lord, I pray that they can realize that they don't have it all together. And maybe they, maybe they just feel like, man, I don't know if I can really do this on my own. Lord, I pray if they feel like they can't do this on their own or they feel like, man, I need a, real, I need a Savior. I need someone to be there for me. Lord, I pray that they pray to you right now. As you said in your word, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Lord, I pray that they can feel that in their spirits. They can feel that in their hearts. That for anyone, for anyone who is, who is feeling just a nudge from the Holy Spirit, Lord, I pray that they answer the call. If there's someone here today that has been a believer for quite some time, I pray that they can just say, Lord, I want to trust you more. I want to take another step closer to you. God, you are so amazing in the way that you work. You have so much power. You have so much design. Stuff that we cannot fathom in our own minds. But Lord, we can just give you thanks. We can give you thanks for the life of JW. Lord, I pray for anyone here today that wants to make you their Lord and Savior so they can have eternal life, that they can be in heaven one day with all the ones that have gone before them. Lord, I thank you for everything you've done. It's in your holy name. Amen. It's an amazing grace through what God has done for us. It's amazing grace what God has allowed us to see through the life of JW. And so at this time, let's reflect on that amazing grace that God has given us. If you would like to pray, if you would like to have prayer, you can come to me if you would like to just pray in your seat. If you'd like to just reflect on the life of Mr. Cowick, this is your time as we listen to this song of amazing grace and how we can remember that amazing 
amazing grace that God has given us. So during this time, I invite you to think about these things, to pray, to take things up with God for yourself. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind but now I see through many dangers toes and snares I have already come tis great that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home the Lord has promised good to me his word my hope He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Yea, when this feeble heart shall fail and mortal Bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise. And when we first begun. Let us always remember that amazing grace that's been there before we've begun, before any of us were even thought of, before the life of J.W., before all of us. But still, His grace has worked through all of us. And we can give thanks for the life of J.W. Cowett. And we can give thanks for what God has done for us. So, dear Heavenly Father, as we close today, Lord, I thank you for your son, Jesus. And I thank you for the amazing grace. And I also thank you for that life that J.W. Cowick lived. Lord, help us realize that it's not over. It is not over today that we will be able to rejoice with those that have gone before us forever, for eternity, if we trust in you as our Lord and Savior. And that we can have community, that we can have joy, that we can walk a life full of joy. Maybe not easy, maybe not roads of gold here on earth, but 
but we can be carried by you. When the more we give to you, the more we're vulnerable with you, the more we trust in you. Lord, be with us as we go out today that we can remember. We can remember what you have done for us on the cross and what you have done for us on earth today and what you have done through the life of J.W. Cowick. Lord, we love you and we thank you. And it is in your precious and holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen.